Hello guys, Invertebrate Dude here. We got an unboxing video for you today. Uh, this is the first package I've ever received from Brandon Maines of Magnificent Beasts. And me and Brandon have been friends for a few years now. Uh, I sold him the bulk of my collection when I left the hobby back in 2018. And so he just sent me a box of a lot of cool uh, species, mostly roaches, but there's a couple of ends too. Uh, so, let's jump into it. Alrighty, here we go. It's a big, big old, large flat rate box. So, just trying to make sure I don't cut through anything here. And I think instead of, uh, instead of newspaper, like most people I know, use for insulation, Brandon is a little fancy. He uses, uh, cellulose fiber, I think is what it's called. I don't actually know. I think cellulose fiber is what he said it was called. But I remember him telling me about him using that. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. So, looks like that. Big old pile of nothing. And, uh... Big old pile of nothing. Alright, oof. I need like a bucket for this. <laughs> uh, Alright, ooh, wow, it's warm in here. Oh, that's probably because this is a heat pack, isn't it? Uh, yep, this is a heat pack. <laughs> that's good though, it's still warm, so whatever's in here should be fine. Uh, let's put this in there. Okay. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Yes, I will. Just put this here. Interesting. Wow, this is really well insulated. Like, this stuff is not freezing over. Or if it were summer, you know, it wouldn't be that hot in here either. That's really good. Tiger hissers. And, uh, I don't know how well the camera's gonna be focusing on this. I'll take macro shots of everything later, but, uh, look at those. Ah! Uh, that's cool. That's cool. I've been wanting one. And it's nice and large meal, too. Uh, I'm gonna send pictures of these to George Beccolani. Uh, of the pronotum of a large male, which this is, and hopefully get his idea of what species this could be, because these tiger hissers are often called Grumphodorina grandidieri, and they're not. Um, they're just not. They have completely different coloration, different morphology. You know, they do not match the lectotype spe museum specimens at all for this species. Um, so, yeah. These, I don't, who knows what they are. Some people in Europe label them as Princessia van Werbecki, but I don't think that's correct either because they have different pronotum structure than van Werbecki, so, uh, and they're smaller too, so, yeah, I do not know, but, uh, so that's why I want to send pictures to a taxonomist who specializes in histories, like George Bicolone. And, uh, so yeah, thank you, Brandon, for these. That's awesome. And does that mean these are... Okay, these are... Ooh. I'm not opening this <laughs> on camera. These are baby camel crickets. Giant camel crickets from Alabama. And it looks like they're all, like, alive. And perfectly healthy. So that's good. 
I got a group of these from Alan John, uh, Alan John, uh, earlier this year, but unfortunately, uh, most of them were dead, because of the heat. They're very sensitive to heat, the adults at least. So that was a bit of a bummer, but, uh, you know, it's not Alan's fault. He sent them to me twice, Jesus, uh, for free, and uh, I thought that all, I thought all they needed was more ventilation. And they should bring cups, but no, the adults are just very sensitive to heat. So, but Brandon got his alive, because he was in Pennsylvania, so it was colder at the time. Uh, he also got them from Alan, and he bred them. And now uh, he sent me some babies, and now that it's fall, it's co cool enough to send them safely. So, they all seem to be alive, so I'm looking forward to working with these. They get huge, absolutely massive. So, really looking forward to working with these. Um, so, and, uh, alright, what do we get here? Very well packed, all of these. Very well insulated. Everything's still kind of warm, you know, from the heat pack. So, and the heat pack was on top too, not even on the bottom. So, this is very nice. These, com these are Compsodi short thing, tiny little micro roaches native to Arizona. You probably can't see crap. They're very, very tiny little things. Um, I can see a bunch running around here. Yeah, probably not gonna get these on camera. I don't even know if I can get macro shots of these, but, uh, yeah, that's them. So that's cool. I need these for feeders, for some mantids I hope to also get from Brandon later next year. And, uh, these are similar to the Compsodes. Not as good used as feeders, according to Brandon. They're very secretive. Um, I got tape stuck to my finger somehow. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are cool. These are tiny little species known as Nocticola species Malaysia. And they're unidentified, obviously. Oh, I dented the cup. Uh, <laughs> but they're fine. Wow. Ah, uh, it's so, you can't see them at all. They're, that These are the tiny, these are the smallest roaches in the hobby like, actually established breeding in the hobby so far. Very, very tiny little micro roaches. Could have potential for use as cleanup crews, to be honest, given how tiny they are and unintrusive to other invertebrates. Um, and also, some use is potential feeders, but Brandon says it's kind of tricky to get them, you know, when you want them. Uh, you know, they kind of burrow and lose substrate. Um, not really burrow, but they're just so small they can shift between, you know, particles of substrate if the substrate's pretty coarse, so it can be difficult to use them as feeders, because they don't really congregate that much under bark and stuff. At least that's what Brandon's told me, so. Uh, that is what I'm assuming is the case. And, oh god, I wish you could see, but there's a little, there's a the adult female up here carrying an usica. That looks pretty cool. But, uh, Man, they are tiny. I think they're they can only have like three eggs in them each, three to four. But they lay a lot. So, kind of prolific. Alright, what do we got here now? Come on, there's somebody. Ooh, these are Hemithrocera palliata, the pallid sun roach. Brandon's the one that actually really uh, got these established in the U.S. hobby. Um, I think they've been here. I don't know if they've ever they'd ever been in the U.S. before Brandon got them, but uh, they uh, certainly didn't stick around if that's the case. But wow. Sorry, the video cut out for some reason. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, these uh, Hemithrocera palliata got from Brandon. And they're cool. They're really small. 
and very active, diurnal, hyper, can climb smooth surfaces well. So they're kind of like, in the eyes of a mantid at least, one of like the, the flies of roaches essentially. And they, I mean, the adults can't fly either. So, gonna be good feeders for the mantids that I want to get from Brandon, which shall remain nameless until I get them, because I don't want to spoil the surprise. But uh, if you know Brandon, if you know Magnificent Beasts on Facebook, and you've seen their page, then you probably know what mantis I'm talking about. But, anyway. And what is this? Oh, he's in a one-two group. That's nice. I was just going to get a pair. Uh, these are Elliptorina davidi, the bumpy hissers. Perhaps one of the most rare hissers in the hobby period. Because they have random massive colony collapses for a lot of breeders. Um, like your colony will be doing great, you'll have a ton of them, and then one day, boom, you'll have like 10 left. Like, very few. Um, big, big random colony crashes, or at least seemingly random. Uh, me and Brandon think maybe sometimes the crashes are due to overpopulation. They might not handle crowding well. Uh, although some people say they have the die-offs happen even when their colony is still a small starter culture. So, uh, and uh, I don't know. They might need some environmental cues or something to do well. I don't know. They're weird. They're a mystery in terms of, you know, why they don't do that well sometimes. But they've been doing okay for Brandon. And so he sent me, uh, one, two. One male, two females. So, nymphs. They're nymphs right now. But, uh, getting close to adulthood. They got that beautiful coloration. Again, I'm not sure the camera's really picking any of this up. This might just be a blur of a deli cup, but, uh... Anyways, they're alive, and the oven just freaking <laughs> Ignore the beeping in the background. Do not see the man behind the curtain. Um, oh, what's this little thing? Alright. Got a little something something here. Small. Oh. <laughs> oh. I also need springtails for those mantids. Very prolific, fast breeding springtails. And none of the ones currently in my collection are going to cut it. I need to stoop down to keeping tropical pink springtails again. I'm going to keep them far away from the rest of my collection because they breed very prolifically, they do very well in roach enclosures, and they can actually be extremely stressful to sensitive, slow-breeding roach species, and that's pretty much all I breed, is sensitive, <laughs> slow-breeding roach species. And I remember them being such a pain back when I used to keep roaches, you know, back in 2018 when I had a bigger collection, because uh, they stressed out a lot of my species, and uh, I got them because I thought they'd be good cleaner crews, and they, they kind of are, but they also really suck. Um, but, uh, so I had Brandon send me some for use as feeders, and I'm going to keep them separately. And he labeled them Satan Springs. <laughs> Satan Springtail. Oh, uh, I love that. That's funny. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, those. Uh, gotta breed those again. And hopefully they don't find their way into my roach enclosures. Because, uh, yeah, that was annoying last time. A necessary evil for the mantis I want to keep. Them. One doesn't. They look very similar though. They may be the same species, but they may be different too. 
Both are not reflexive, though. Not, not by a long shot. Hyperignota, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not reflexive. But, uh, these are very slow breeding roaches, very finicky. They are hard to breed over multiple generations, according to the European breeders I've talked to. Um, or at least they can be difficult. And Brandon's had them for like a couple years now, I think. And they, they did well for him initially, but then they just kind of just never really took off, you know? So he sent me his last remaining individuals, both of them. And uh, this is what they look like, kind of a, a bit of a boring brown roach, but uh, there's one in there, there's another female in here. So these, these are adult females, both of them, so, yeah, hopefully I can get them to reproduce, they've been, he says they've been exposed to adult males, so, they should be fertile, they should be mated, it's just a matter of, can I get them to actually give birth or not, you know, so, uh, gonna be a little difficult, it might fail, but, uh, oh yeah, I didn't send me them as a last ditch effort to see, you know, uh, maybe it'll do better for someone else and the change of enclosure, you know, sometimes these little things can just get things to, you know, breed. And then hopefully I can send them some back, should I succeed in breeding them. But, uh, yeah, and then these look much the same. I'm not really going to disturb them if I don't have to, so I, I should be those ones and I'll leave these ones alone. But, uh, Hopefully those will take off for me, but if they don't, you know, I won't be too surprised, but, you know, thought it was worth an effort. Alright, what else? Is that it? I think that might be it, actually. Let's see, heat pack. Uh, yeah, that's it. Alrighty, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I would rate Brandon 10 out of 10, great packing, everything was alive, and well, great insulation, this stuff works really nicely, and, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, definitely, would you receive more boxes from me? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely check them out, Magnificent Beast on Facebook, been a little bit busy lately, but, uh, I think he's getting back into doing some orders, so or plans to soon, so, yeah, definitely, great guy, great roaches, he has filled the void left by roach crossing, um, you know, uh, in terms of big roach vendors in the U.S., uh, so, you know, he's got, I think, the biggest selection of roaches available right now, uh, on the market, so, uh, certainly has one of the biggest, if not the largest, uh, collection of roaches in the U.S. currently, so, yeah, definitely check them out. Uh, alrighty guys, see you later.